Ick. Damn it. Now, anyway, it's my arrogant bastard clone. That stinking keg's about done, and I'm hoping I was going to get it on camera, but it doesn't look like it's going to happen. So, let's talk about me. <clears throat> talk about me, me, me. It's Homebrew Wednesday. Happy Wednesday. Homebrew Wednesday, guys. <clears throat> a little horse today. A little horse. Not much. Not bad, but a little. Not a little bit. Just like a... Like a Shetland pony type little horse. All right, so <clears throat> I got some stuff homebrew related. I got some stuff that's not homebrew related. A little more of a less it's homebrew related. Um, let's see. Last Friday would be three days of the Blood Orange IPA in primary. And I went ahead and I put in a pound of Blood Orange flavored candy syrup. So. That beer does look, it looks uh, looks a lot better now um, since it's been a primary. Um, it's not as hazy, not as milky, but not to, not to say it's going to clear up later on. Um, oh, excuse me. I got my blood orange. I mean, not my, my uh, I got my supercharger on tap, and it is hazy. It is dirty. I don't think it's going to clean up. It doesn't have anything floating in it. It's just uh, hazy. I can't, I put gelatin in it, and it's pretty hazy. Um, it's like heady topper hazy, so yeah, whatever. Tastes good, tastes awesome. It's got a real good kind of uh, melony, kind of citrusy kind of flavor to it. It's pretty good stuff. I got got some tasting notes <clears throat> when I was uh, kegging that, and um, it's, yeah, it's pretty good. And um, let's see, it is the first Wednesday after New Year's, right? So I hope that everybody is uh, okay, made it through New Year's just fine, no issues. Um, I personally, hey, I'm great. I'm fine. <clears throat> Besides this thing, um, frog. But, uh, let's see, New Year's Eve, what did I do? The old lady and I went to a place up the road, about an hour, so, man, not look like quite an hour, but got a hamburger. Then way back through, there's a small brewery in that town, well, in Ohio, it's called Broush Brewery, and we had, um, had some beers, had a couple flights, <clears throat> Um, predominantly Belgian beers, um, and lagers. They don't have any, a whole lot of, uh, they don't have any IPAs on tap. I don't, I don't know if that's on purpose or whatever, but it's a small three barrel system, 90 gallon tanks. Um, and, um, um, talk about that later on. Um, they had a couple Belgians that I really liked. One was a sour apple Belgium. Um, exactly what that is. I don't know. Um, it was Belgium. It says it has sour malt in the description. I don't, I don't know what sour malt means. Um, I have yet to do any kind of uh, investigation. Then they had a a, a Belgian red wheat um, with uh, hickory syrup. And um, that's what I've got here. I've got, look at that. Look at that. Look at that. I made some hickory syrup. My brother, which was just a few minutes down the road from me, has hickory trees on his farm. So I made hickory syrup. <clears throat> I had a pound and a half of hickory syrup. I mean, a pound and a half of hickory bark. And for my purposes, I should have got maybe a half a pound of bark because I end up making a gallon and a half of syrup. And really, all I need is about two pints. This is a pint. So there's, what, about two about two cups and a pint? And this, is you know, pint is a pound. Mm -hmm. So really, that's probably good enough for my homebrew stuff. Um... I didn't quite. I'll probably put a link in the description section for the uh, for the little article I read on the Insert Webs how to make this stuff. <clears throat> but I did not have enough sugar in the house to mix that to make a simple syrup, a two to one simple syrup. So I made a one to one simple syrup. But um, for what I need, I'll, I'm looking mainly for the flavoring, not for the uh, not for the uh, syrupy stuff. So I'm probably going to do a make a brown. Probably throw that in about the last 15 minutes. Um, I think that's really, that's about it for this guy. Um, I got a new regulator coming. Um, I got a dual regulator, actually, a dual body regulator, so I can uh, have serving temperature and, and um, freaking, um, horse carb. I was going to do that with one I had, <clears throat> but I took, I, I, I ran out of gas this past week. 
um, during vacation. I had to run and get another bottle. While it was down, I was going to go ahead and uh, put on my other valve body. Well, the valve body that I got, it's all left-handed except for the um, except for the top valve, the, the high pressure valve. I mean, the high pressure gauge is is uh, right-handed, but everything else is left-handed. And I, I didn't. I thought I bought what I needed, but I didn't. So I said the hell with it. I went to Northern Brewer and got my own. So it should be here tomorrow. Um, oh, let's see. I should be getting beers from Brad here in a few days, probably a week or so. For the mold experiment, there's only going to be I think six beers in there now, <clears throat> so I might do I might do a vertical of maybe a vertical you can call it a vertical tasting. Might lay them all out at once and just do uh, notes of everything. Maybe see how that works out. For I haven't quite figured out what I'm going to do with that yet, but um, let's switch hands here because my left hand's so dainty and getting tired. So um, yeah, let's look forward to. Um, I don't I don't know. So I think I don't know when I gotta create timing, timing, timing for the brown. I I don't know when I'm gonna do it. Um, my very first all green was a brown. Um, so I may substitute the brown sugar for this stuff. Um, so I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what I'm gonna do. But that's definitely in the mix. <clears throat> so. Um, I think I'm gonna call it a day because I got about 11 or so minutes of the footage for me kegging and making the maple bark, not the maple, but Jesus, Jesus, the uh, the uh, hickory bark syrup. Um, I mean, typical. I'll think of stuff later on when I'm done, got everything uploading. Uh, but anyway. Uh, looking forward to the new year. Uh, everything's shipping up, shipping out, whatever. Everything's looking good. So I'm gonna call it a call it a week and uh, have another drink. Hopefully, I don't want to try to kill this. I tried to kill this last night, and uh, you know, eight percent of uh, yeah, it kind of gets to you. I really don't feel like being sit down, passed out, drunk in my own um, <clears throat> love seat, uh, waiting to go to bed. But anyway. That's it. I think I'm going to hit the bricks, kids. And uh, say cheers, guys. Have another drink for you guys. You have another one, right? All right, guys. See you guys later. Cheers. See you. Peace. Hey, guys. Wally. Kegging my supercharger. And that is... Focus, come on. That's uh, about 10, 10, 12 or so. So that's pretty good. See, it's... uh. Not clear at all, but um, put some gelatin in the uh, in the old keg and clear it up that way. So I'm going to commence the kegging and I'll uh, maybe do some tasting notes because I'm so awesome at tasting notes. Um, sarcasm. You know, look how dirty that is. <laughs> Still got a ton of hops floating on the top, but that's. Four ounces of hops, that's two ounces of citra and two ounces of amarillo. So yeah. Dirty, 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 dirty. Alright, you guys. Let's do a tasting. Smell. You can definitely smell the uh the fruity. It's all citrus. Orange, a lot of orange type of citrus, tangerine. I would expect that from the amarillo and citra. Dry up. It's got kind of a tang in the background. Maybe that's just a you know a yeast clarity issue, a hop haze issue, but not uh, not a bad not a bad thing. It doesn't not it doesn't smell like it's soured or anything. It's just got um. But I think I think that's from the citra. That's if you guys have had a. Like a single hop citra beer, you kind of—it's kind of got that kind of funk um, way in the back end of the of the nose on it. I think that's what that is. But that smells good. It smells real good. I'm hoping it clears out a little bit. I'm I'm pretty confident it will. It's got a it's got a ton of hops in it. So 
I have to figure figure out my ABV, but I think it's I think I figure it should be around six six and a half percent or so maybe. I think I finished at ten sixty one, started at ten sixty one, finished at ten ten twelve. So I'll go figure figure that out real quick. But hmm, it's real real light body. Not, not watery. It's kind of borderline watery, but not. It's kind of got a little, a little better than light mouthfeel, but not quite medium. I don't think I would classify this as medium. But yeah, the citrus carries carries through. I can't say. I remember what Warrior tastes like as a bittering, but. So, and maybe, I didn't, no, I used Magnum, didn't I? Magnum is bitter. I can't, I'm going to go back and look at, look over my notes. But no, it's a good beer. Um, it's definitely, it's got a lot of character for just a pale. Especially something that's got a pretty, pretty minimal grist. You know, it's not, not an overly complex grist bill, green bill on this. But, does have a lot of hops in it, so a lot of character there. Uh, yeah, that's gonna be a good one. Um, it's got that. There's very little malt to this. Um, I mean, there's there's some maltiness to it, but there's a lot of hop, a lot of hop there, uh, a lot of hop character, a lot of hop flavor. So, um, I'm trying to think of a commercial beer that would be somewhat akin to that um uh, it's the bittering on it it's got a real kind of firm kind of uh i want to say almost meaty kind of bittering on it it's not like it it's not like um kind of like a bell sue hoarded you know it's kind of got that in your face kind of mm, bittering but it's, this isn't this isn't quite that harsh the bittering on the back end i mean on the the bittering is not harsh at all it kind of it lingers on the back of your tongue, but it's kind of like, um, it's not the same kind of bitter you, like you guys get from like a stone beer, or um, well, maybe it's maybe it's more borderline like a Sierra Nevada. Maybe that's what I'm thinking of. I don't know. It's good. I, I think it'll be really good once it's carved up and uh, cleared out a little bit and get some age on it. Uh, so anyway, I'm going to get the hell out of here and finish my cleaning up. See you guys. So right now I'm making some shag bark hickory syrup. Um, that's 0.8 pounds. I washed it, dried it in the oven at 350 for um, about 15 minutes. And it smells awesome. So here's the other little bit that I've got. I'm gonna measure all this out, dry weight, then um, measure the water that I use. That's my scale. Pretty exciting. And. Um, Go from there. I'm going to see what I can do with that. See if I can make a couple pints of um, about two pounds, maybe maybe one pound would be good enough for um, some hickory syrup. Maybe use that in a brown here in a little bit. Um, there's a story behind all that. I had a um, a um, a red wheat Belgian, I think it was brown. Yeah, New Year's Eve, and it was awesome. It had this. Um, homemade hickory syrup in it and the nose on it was amazing and had a little nut taste to it so I'm going to try to go ahead and do that but um this is my uh my five gallon pot I made for um for um small batches but I haven't used it yet so this is going to be good enough for this see you guys all right that is um one and a half pounds of bark and let's see Jeez. eight quarts of water so I'm going to come to a boil and turn it down to a simmer, let it simmer for about a half an hour. Finally, finally, finally at a simmer. Jeez, old Pete, that was a good hour. Okay, just to uh, get out of the way of the kids and the wife. <clears throat> this is a Belgium... Um, basically a Belgian blonde 
with uh, Granny Smith apples thrown in ferment, uh, single, uh, blah, 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 in the uh, fermentation, the um, first fermentation. Um, this is from a brewery in, in about an hour north of me, about 45 minutes north of me in Wilmington, Ohio. Um, it's called Brouch. And um, what I've done, I went ahead and got a growl out of that, but anyway, uh, let's see. New Year's Eve. New Year's Eve, I was there. Um, had a few beers, had a couple flights. And a few beers uh, really stood out to me. That one being one of them, which it smells. I mean, it's got Belgium up front, sour in the back. The description of the brewery says um, sour malt. I don't, I don't know if that's. I got to do some research there. Um, but it's got Granny Smith, um, whole Granny Smith, threw into the uh, the primary. So it's it's. I don't know if that makes it a graph or or what. It's not really a cider. I wouldn't say because it's all basically a beer with. Apples in the sec in fermentation, primary fermentation. It's awesome. I love it. It's a great beer. Just that's one of those beers that you just kind of drink it and you're like, man, that's this pretty interesting. You want some more? And the, um, then another one was their um, they called it Old Smoky, which was a which is a beer that they made with um, hickory syrup, and that's what I'm doing now. So that's what you guys have seen before. So that's kind of the reasoning where I'm at now. I'm kind of thinking. Um, I think I'm going to do a brown with some hickory syrup in it, and that's kind of where I'm at. But, yeah, if you guys are ever in Wilmington, Ohio, um, it's a little place on um, 68 South, right before you get outside of town. Um, it's pretty good stuff. They don't have any IPAs on, on tap. Everything's either Belgians or lagers. They don't have a whole lot of whole lot of what you would think would be popular beer. So, you know, the guy brewing on a basically a three-barrel system, 90-gallon 90 90 gallon tank, and uh doing what he wants he doesn't really have a whole lot of social media he's got facebook there's no twitter there's no untapped um some people have done some untapped stuff but that's basically it guys um it's pretty good stuff it's a, it's a guy doing his own thing and you know, be damned with everyone else so yeah that's sort of where i'm at with all the the previous video i'll see you guys 22 22 cups i'm gonna boil that down to roughly a little over half. Let's see where I'm at at that point. So that's where I'm at. Let's see. I think I'm gonna let that uh, boil down. Right now, 44 cups of sugar is a little bit out of my range. I don't think I have that much. I got five pounds plus some change in the house, so. Let me see what happens. I'm gonna boil it down. Hopefully, I don't get too uh, too much, too concentrated. But we'll see how it works out. Final result. Let's see, two, four, six, seven, seven pints and one half gallon. That's. I didn't have enough sugar to do two to one sugar. Two sugars to one liquid. So I did one to one. That's still pretty sweet. So. I think the majority of that's really for flavor anyway, for what I'm using, so anyway, pretty good stuff. Tastes awesome.